What's going on, family? This is Brother Rob again, back with another edition, another lesson here in Ijikati African martial arts, okay? But before we jump right into it, guys, I want just to offer this. Someone sent me a message and say, hey, Brother Rob, how can I donate? How can I support what you're doing, right? Because I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I don't take a paycheck for what I'm doing, right, in terms of teaching African martial arts. You know, you guys know I teach in person, I teach in the city, I teach in Portsmouth, Virginia, right? So I'm teaching the youth, right, every every week, right, twice a week. We're teaching, we're training, right? But, I, you know, I don't take a paycheck for that, right? So if you guys want to support, if you want to donate, please just go to AfricanMartialArts.com. There's a link there you can donate. Or if you want to become an instructor, you want to kind of teach what it is that, that I'm doing, uh, please, you can sign up for that as well. We got a great uh, program for you to enroll in uh, to that effort as well but just to kind of help support the cause because African martial arts is not the place you want to go to if you want to make a lot of money teaching martial arts right I mean you're better off doing you know Taekwondo or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu okay those are the money makers right in terms of martial arts but you know you have to teach your passion and this is my passion this is what I do okay so let's go ahead and jump right into it so we'll be getting a lot of comments guys in our videos to say hey that looks a lot like you know karate or that looks a lot like kung fu that looks a lot like jeet kune do you know and and absolutely there's gonna be a lot of similarities between a lot of the various martial arts so I want to create this video just to show you guys some of the differences um, in them right and so one thing is, you know, I have an extensive background, certainly in, in different martial arts and, and even in Jeet Kune Do, right? Especially in Jeet Kune Do. And so this video specifically is talking about the difference between Ijikati and Jeet Kune Do. And so I had the opportunity last year, I mentioned this to you guys in a previous video, I went to a sparring lab in DC, okay? And I got to spar with guys who did karate, who did Jeet Kune Do, who did Wing Chun, right? And all these other different types of martial arts, okay? So I wanna share some of those uh, videos with you guys, okay? Much respect to the uh, guys that I train with, okay? They're fantastic martial arts, great group of guys, and group, good friends of mine, okay? To be quite honest with you, right? So this is not a video saying that I'm better than them or they're better than me or anything like that. It's not a comparison, but I just wanna show you guys, you know, how it how it pans out, right? In terms of what, what we did and, and their level. And everything always depends on the level of the practitioner, right? I'm not the best fighter in the world by far, right? Um, you know, but certainly I want to be able to show you guys, okay, this is how we apply it in terms of sparring, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. All right, so this is the first match actually of the event, okay? So I just kind of showed up, volunteered, and this guy, uh, I didn't know him at the time. I didn't know he did Jeet Kune Do, but I wanted to set the precedence right away, okay? So I wanted to come out with some aggression, okay? I wanted to come out with some aggression and just kind of set the tone right away for the event, okay? So that's really what I'm focused on in this match here, being a little bit more aggressive, pushing the pace, pushing forward, okay? Attacking a lot, okay, in various ways. It's a little bit hard to see, at least uh, from this angle, okay, what all is connecting. I see some... Uh, uh, low kicks there connecting some punches and things like that but working the footwork getting to the outside hitting the low kicks here uh, changing my rhythm right coming in and out bouncing moving okay and again just overall being fairly you know fairly aggressive i do want him to kind of come towards me and to attack as well that's why i'm kind of flaring my hands out keeping my hands low okay because i do want him to initiate attacks to hopefully open up uh, an opening for me to target um, but really I just want to push the pace you know again strike low set them up with a few things and then eventually go high as I did there with the punch okay again just mixing things up here trying to keep him guessing I don't want him to know what I'm doing he's like what is this guy doing okay and that was my goal to try to confuse him with my movement with my footwork with my distancing right I'm going slow with the kicks on that one right we're not you know we're just sparring right it's not a fight right so we're just going nice and light here um, you know with the kicks okay but I did notice he had an exposure here to the head kicks okay his hand is down pretty low as well okay so I did go for a few head kicks there uh, just noticing that okay I'm just kind of bouncing forward a little bit here just just having fun with it right just having a good time just out there having fun you always want to make sure you have fun when you spar and really just enjoy yourself but really that's what I'm trying to do be aggressive change my pace mix them up confuse them working the hands there you see the hand movements here right working the hands here just to keep him guessing he doesn't know what is going on what i'm trying to do that was my goal 
All right, guys. So hopefully you enjoyed that that, that little clip there. Again, it's just it's just one round, and I have some other videos I'm gonna show you guys as well in terms of sparring and and how I I've applied uh, each kind of African martial arts in terms of sparring with different systems, different styles. Okay, so um, it's very important you guys do sparring. I highly encourage it. Of course, it's not the same as fighting, but it's one of the best tools that we have in terms of developing our tools and developing our skills. Okay. Now let's go ahead and talk about now the difference between each kind of African martial arts and Jeet Kune Do, right? So it's interesting because, you know, you guys know, if you know anything about Jeet Kune Do, you know Bruce Lee developed it, right? World famous Bruce Lee, and he's a legend, right? But when Bruce Lee developed Jeet Kune Do, what did he do, right? He pulled from all these different martial arts, right? He pulled from boxing, from fencing, from Wing Chun Kung Fu, and maybe some others in developing Jeet Kune Do. But no one ever said, hey, Bruce Lee, all you're doing is boxing or all you're doing is Kung Fu or, or, or Wing Chun or you're just doing fencing, right? No, they said, oh, wow, that's a new martial art. That's Jeet Kune Do, right? <laughs> but for some reason, when we develop, when we pull and reconstruct our own right martial art, our African martial art, whether we're pulling from Capoeira, 52 Block, Musangwe, right? People say, you know, oh, no, no, you can't do that. That's just karate or you're doing taekwondo or you're doing kung fu. No, we're doing the same thing that martial artists for centuries have done, right? They pulled and reconstructed and developed something new, okay? And that's what we're doing with Ijikai, with African martial arts, except we're focused more on, on our traditional martial arts and pulling and integrating those together primarily okay as well as developing our own creativity and adding that to it okay and that's very important as african people right we are very very creative right and so you want to use your creativity in developing it because that's what makes your particular um method unique to you right and it's going to make it work for you because you add your own creativity to it so let's go ahead and break down the differences here with jeet kune do and uh and ijikati african martial arts now I have an extensive background in Jeet Kune Do, guys, so I'm not coming to you this with not knowing anything about Jeet Kune Do, and I'm not just making this up off the cuff, okay? So I want to preface that for you guys, and I've studied and trained Jeet Kune Do, but for me, I got tired of crediting, right, Asian martial arts for new things that I was developing, right? New things or things I would pull from African martial arts, you know, I can't give credit to, to something else for that, okay? So that, that, that spurred the growth and the development for me of promoting uh, African martial arts, okay? Because it was something that was different than what I was doing previously. So some of the footwork that you have that you'll see in Jeet Kune Do, because I got this comment on the footwork video, you have in Jeet Kune Do, and I, I actually, have, I got the Tao of Jeet Kune Do so you guys can see the evidence, right? You can see it right here, and I don't know if you guys can see it here, but it talks about a forward shuffle and a backward shuffle, and it talks about uh, circling right and circling left, okay? And there's some other footwork here too. You can certainly read this in the Tao of Jeet Kune Do on your own, okay? But there's a couple things you wanna think about, right? A forward and backward shuffle, we also call this a, a slide step, okay? And in Jeet Kune Do, that's what it's called. It's called a slide step, okay? Where you're sliding one foot up and coming back. Now, when you look at that, and that looks very similar to footwork I've shown you already in terms of sweeping, right? Our sweep step, right? Where we sweep forward, we sweep uh, back, right? Now, the difference is in Jeet Kune Do, because it is, and you guys know, Jeet Kune Do is way of the intercepting fist. You're primarily going on straight lines. Very, it's more linear, okay? You're going forward and you're going back. And that's one way to certainly do it, okay? And that's your forward and backward shuffle, as you saw in black and white, forward and backward shuffle, okay? And then circling right and circling left, right? I can go, you know, go right and I can go left, okay? But right now we're talking about forward and backward shuffle being similar to a sweep step, okay? The difference is in Ijikati, we don't just go in, you know, linear path, right? Forward or back or right or left. If you guys recall, we use what we call our acili, our seed, our root, our essence, right? Which is essentially a compass. So we're using eight directions, okay? So I can go forward with my sweep step. I can go back, certainly, but I can also go in different directions, right? I can go, uh, I can go to my right, okay, which we, is essentially going to be your east direction, and I can go west to my west direction with the same footwork, okay? But I can also go at angles, right? I can go at a northeast, right? I can go in a southwest, okay? I can use the different directions on the compass. Additionally, I don't, I don't move my feet. I don't have to move my feet both in the same direction. For example, let's say that I'm going back, I'm going south, right? I can certainly move south-south, okay, which 
or north north okay both feet are moving in the same direction okay in Jeet Kune Do, that's how you're doing this particular footwork your slide step or or forward back or shuffle okay however in Ijukati with our sweep step okay I can move one foot back okay but the other foot does not always have to go back okay in other words I can slide one foot back and the other foot can go forward which is north okay so I can go south north here okay and that switches my feet right south north and I can attack here okay I can also go south into a north um, west direction, which is at the angle, right? Which is at an angle. So I can go south northwest here, okay? And regular speed that looks like this, right? South northwest. It's the same footwork, okay? It's sweeping, okay? Sweeping, right? I can also go south to west, right? I can go south and then west here, okay? South and west, right? Here and angle out, okay? I can go south. I can keep going on and on, right? Guys, I can go on and on. I can go at different angles, okay? Additionally, I can go on a straight line, okay, here, right, or I can curve it out. I can circle with my lines, okay, because we understand in African martial arts and really, you know, it, it just in nature in general, we have straight lines and curved lines, so we use both, okay. So, you know, in JKD, you have typically, right, a very linear path, okay, in terms of, because you want to intercept on a straight line the shortest distance between two points. In Ijikati, we use everything, right? We use all eight directions, okay? And straight and curved lines in our sweep step, okay? So our sweep step can be in any different direction, okay? Any way we wanna use our footwork, we can sweep, okay? And we don't have to just go forward and back. So that's the primary difference, okay? In terms of we're using eight directions as well as on a curve and straight line. And it's not linear forward to back, okay? So that's just <laughs> one example, guys, in terms of the differences in our footwork. We can talk about striking, okay? Really, we only have two punches, two kicks. We have a straight punch and we have a curve punch. That's it. Same thing with our kick. We have a straight kick, which can go forward, whether it's with the toe up or a rotational here, okay? Or rotational, okay? Either way, it's a straight kick, whether I'm doing a straight kick this way, straight kick this way, or a straight kick this way, it's going from my body directly forward, okay? We have straight and curved, okay? That's all we're doing, straight and curved lines, and we have straight and curved kicks, straight and curved punches. That's really it, okay? We use this concept of push and pivot, right? Push and pivot, so there's a generating power in our punches, okay? So it's the same, same kind of things, right? So these are some of the things that I haven't, I haven't personally found in other martial arts. Not saying they don't exist, right? I don't know everything, guys, right? I don't know everything. So. There will be some similarities, absolutely. Um, me personally, I haven't seen these concepts myself in other martial arts, particularly, you know, eight directions, compass, moving at angles, right? Uh, or curve and straight lines in terms of our footwork, okay? And really dissecting punches down to straight and curve, right? Because your uppercut or a hook, right? Or an overhand, these are all the same punch, right? They're curved lines. They're curved punches. They're curving, they're curving, right? So why call them different names? That's just kind of our, our concept. So we call them muduara, right? Which is basically circling, right? They're just curve punches, okay? Same thing with our kicks, right? So anyway, guys, I hope that's a good breakdown for you um, between Jeet Kune Do and Ijikati African Martial Arts. Again, please go to africanmartialarts.com. Consider uh, supporting and helping us to grow. Please like, subscribe, share, all that stuff that the YouTube algorithm wants you to do. Appreciate you guys. See you guys in the next lesson.